So as I mentioned in the last video that in the next one, we're going to do some differentiate composite functions. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And by the way, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure to do that. And also make sure to like this video and share it with whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. Okay, so what exactly is a composite function? So a composite function is where you have an expression, which is raised to a certain power, okay? The entire expression is raised to a certain power, okay? So the question is, how do you differentiate functions like these? Okay. So as always, we're going to learn how to differentiate a few functions. And then looking at the pattern, we're going to try and come up with a general rule. Okay, so here goes. So the first thing you do is you look at the coefficient or the constant that you have just outside the whole power. Okay, so in this case, that is one. So what happens is the power and the constant, they get multiplied. Okay, so what's one times three? That's three. And then you take away, take one away from the power. So that means you take one away from three. So three minus one is two. And then you multiply it by the differential of the expression inside, okay? Or in other words, differential of the expression that you have inside the bracket, which in this case is x plus 2, the differential of which is going to be just 1, which makes no difference at all to our final answer. And our dy by dx, or gradient function, is basically 3x plus 2, the whole thing squared. There you go. That's your answer. Okay, so try and keep an eye out for a pattern, which we're going to write down once we're through with uh, the three examples. Okay, so here, let's see what happens. So two gets multiplied by three, so that's six. We have x plus five as it is. We reduce, we take one away from the power, so that's just one, might as well not write it. Okay, and then multiplied by the differential of the expression inside the bracket, which is going to be one. And now you have six bracket x plus five, which if you want, you can expand and write it as six x plus 30. Is that what six times five is? Yeah, six times five is 30. Okay, and let's do another question. Let's see what we have over here. So this time, four times four is 16. And then don't forget to reduce the power by one. So four minus one is three. And then you multiply it by the differential of the expression that's inside the bracket, which is going to be three in this case. So 16 times three, my guess would be it's 48. Yep, 48 it is. So 48 into three X minus one, the whole thing cubed is what dy by dx is actually equal to. Okay, now, I hope you have sort of figured out a general rule mentally, but if you haven't, it's okay, nothing to worry about. That's what I'm here for. Okay, so here's how this works. If you have something that looks like this, y is equals to a, and let's say inside the bracket, you have px plus q to the power n, okay? Now let's see what happens when you differentiate something like this. So the first thing is that a and n get multiplied. Okay, so this, remember, is dy by dx. So that's a times n. And then you have px plus q as it is. You reduce the power by 1. That means it is now n minus 1. And then you multiply it by the differential of px plus q, which in this case is going to be p. Okay, and then you sort of write the whole thing nicely. Multiply whatever it is that you can multiply. So in this case, it's going to be a times n times p into px plus q to the power n minus one. And there you go. This is sort of like a general rule, okay, or general form of differentiating a composite function. Okay, so now we're gonna do some examples. We're gonna do three examples to be precise. And these examples are from your same book, exercise 12.2, okay? So dy by dx, let's see what happens over here. So four gets multiplied by one because that's what you have outside. So four into half x minus seven Reduce the power by one, so four minus one is three, and then you multiply it by the differential of the expression that's inside the bracket, which is going to be half. So you can simplify this, two ones are, and two twos are, and now dy by dx is equals to two, bracket open, half x minus seven, the whole thing cubed, which is the correct answer. Okay, then comes part g. So dy by dx is now going to be equal to five times six, which is 30 into five minus x as it is, the power gets reduced by one, which means it's now going to be four multiplied by the differential of the expression inside the bracket, which in this case is going to be minus one. And now you have your final answer, which is dy by dx equals to minus 30 bracket five minus x to the power four. I will encourage you guys to attempt the rest of the questions and make sure to check your answer so that you know you're on the right track. Okay, and then let's do this one. So dy by dx is equals to five gets multiplied by one into x squared minus 3x, you reduce the power by 1, which means it is now 4, and then you multiply it by the differential of x squared minus 3x, which is going to be 
to x minus 3, okay? Now you have a lot of ways in which you can write down the final answer. You can either multiply 5 with 2x minus 3 and then write it, or you can leave it in bracket form only, okay? So that means you can either write it like this, 5 into 2x minus 3 into x square minus 3x to the power 4, or if you want to further simplify it, you can do just that. 5 into 2x is 10x minus 15 in one bracket, x square minus 3x, the whole thing to the power 4, another. And make sure to make the bracket because remember, it's all of 10x minus 15 that's getting multiplied by x square minus 3x, okay? And yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be solving some more complex questions, okay? So make sure to check that out. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.